squirrel folk. What is the most creepy thing you've seen or experienced? Part two, please make sure you share and subscribe us. Account one. My grandfather grew up on 80 acres in a rural area and said they found transients living in their woods all the time. Some would even walk up to the house to ask for food. He said most of them were people who would hop off a freight train when it stopped, slowed down near the station a few miles away. Account two. I had a black dog named Shadow. I let him out one night then went back in to grab a jacket. I came back out and called him. I can just make out a big black shadow running from the far side of the yard. Figured it was him. I hear a noise to my left and look to see my dog coming around the corner. When I turn back, whatever was running across the yard to me is gone. Account 3. I live in a fairly rural part of NJ, surrounded by forest and hills. One night in high school, my friends and I were driving down one of the local back roads to find a place to chill and smoke. As we're driving, a deer jumps out in front of the car, as they normally do. This time, though, as we slowed down, the deer turned around back the way it came, walked up to a tree, and then proceeded to bash its head in on the tree in one hit and fall dead. It didn't run into the tree, it walked over and then slammed its head into it. It was the weirdest behavior we've ever seen. Could have been rabies, but was really freaky. Unsettled all of us, and we decided to go back and smoke at my friend's house. Also, Fox screams. Holy hell, does it sound like murder. Count four. Grew up spending a ton of time in the Colorado Rockies. In college, a friend and I were on a weekend backpacking trip up in National Forest Land, about 300 yards off trail, when we stumbled across a mostly buried bunker someone had made. Think a 20-foot-long tough shed, buried up to its roof. We only noticed it because sun glinted off one of two small windows in the roof, which had been deliberately covered with brush, tree litter. Looking through the windows, we could make out a cot, buckets and tubs of food and supplies, etc. Found the door, concealed, partially buried, which had a heavy padlock securing it, noped out of there with a quickness, didn't want to run into whoever had built the place. Account 5. My brother and I were home alone watching TV. He had an inflatable, life-size, stone-cold wrestler in the basement. When you punched it, it would pop back up and say things like, cuz Stone Cold says so, so we're watching TV, and we know it's just us at home when suddenly we hear cuz Stone Cold says, so coming from the basement. Very creepy since the thing wouldn't talk on its own, something had to have moved it, and we were home alone. We both just looked at each other and ran downstairs to see what was happening. My dog had Stone Cold horizontal by the waist, and poor Stone Cold was rapidly deflating, water from the bottom weight dripping into the carpet like clear white blood. My dog's eyes were glazed over from the glory of the kill, and he'd periodically give Stone Cold another shake for good measure. You see, my brother had been chasing my dog with Stone Cold for about two weeks, and my dog was very afraid of this inflatable man. I only wish I'd seen him working up the nerve to approach and kill him. R.I.P. Inflatable Stone Cold. Count six. I used to live in the desert for a year, and on nights when the moon isn't out or there are clouds blocking out the stars and moon, it's almost pitch black. You can't see more than 10 yards ahead of you. One night I was driving down the highway going home, and then suddenly in my headlights I see a guy running on the side of the highway full on sprinting. I'm going 70 millimeters, so it's only for a second or two, but I'm like, what the hell was he running from? I hope he's okay, because I'm not pulling over LMAO. But then maybe a minute later, I see another guy in my headlights, only he's walking on the side of the highway, and I swear to God it looked like the same guy. Two separate guys in the dark, walking, running on the side of the highway. What possible reason could explain that? I didn't see any cars on the side of the road that might have broken down. I was so weirded out, I just had an uncomfortable feeling the entire ride home. Account 7. I lived way out in the country when I was 15 years old. So way out, it would take us an hour to the closest grocery store, and it would take the cops 45 minutes to get to our house, no neighbors close by. If something happened, no one would hear you scream. One night, I got a gut feeling in my stomach that something wasn't right. I ignored it 
and went to sleep, thinking it was just anxiety. Then, I wake up to a blood-curdling scream at two in the morning. I was absolutely terrified. These screams were demonic, switching between a high-pitched screech of a woman to a growl of a man. My entire family woke up, and my stepdad got his shotgun. My step, dad went outside. Mind you, this is the country, and there are no street lights. It is pitch black other than the porch light above us. The screaming and screeching continues. It sounds like two people. My sister had gone out with her boyfriend earlier that day and still hadn't returned. Based off the screaming, my mom thought my sister was being murdered in the woods by her then boyfriend. My mom started screaming, Jason, fake name. Jason, you let go of her, get your hands off her. Where are you? Then it goes absolutely silent. We're so scared thinking she's dead and he's coming for us next. Then another noise begins, and it's the voice of a man, demon. He yells, I am Jacob. I am the son of God. I am chosen to find the baby. Only I can make this passage. Only I can find this baby in Valin. Now we're really scared thinking my sister's boyfriend is part of a cult and going to kill us all. My mom finally calls the police. All the while this person is screeching and howling and creeping closer and closer to our house. After about 30 minutes of this, we finally see the outline of person in our field of vision, right next to our car. My stepdad shoots near, yells, don't you get any closer now. Person creeps closer, stepdad shoots closer. Now don't make me kill you, he yells. With that second shot, we hear the person run back up the woods and we wait for the police to arrive. Finally, after 45 minutes, the police car comes through and shines light on the perpetrator. We cannot believe what we see. It is a skinny, completely naked, shaved headman crawling on all fours like a gorilla, or like Gollum from Lotar, if that's easier to picture. The police grab him, him screeching and howling the entire time. The cops didn't even come down to explain what was happening. They just took off, and we had to go back to sleep like nothing happened. The next day, we have to call the police to find out what happened and who this was. Apparently, this was one of our neighbors, who was a repeat drug offender. Our neighbor mixed a bunch of drugs together and tripped out a little too hard. It was actually unfortunate to hear he succumbed to his addictions a couple of years later. He was very young. This was a terrifying night. And for those that don't live in the country, this is the true horrors we have to face. Unemployment, drug and alcohol addictions, and domestic abuse. These issues can run rampant in rural areas, and I hope our areas will get better one day. TLDR, a demon. Man showed up screeching at our house in the country. He stated he was the son of God and came to find a baby. Police arrive. It was a man all tripped out on many different substances. We need to be more aware of the drug problem in rural areas. Account 8. Yeah, never occurred to me before that a kingfisher's laughing would probably scare the shit out of a foreigner hearing it for the first time, especially if they're out in the bush alone. Should also add that the one of the most unexplained things that I've been told about is from my sister's fiancé. Said that him and his brother got chased by a Min Min light one night years ago when they were driving down to Brisbane from Blackwater. Said this light kept following them from behind a bit of a distance off. He said he then watched it go off into the bush next to the road and still kept on following them while darting around trees. So he starts yelling at his brother who was driving to get out of there as fast as possible. They were apparently booking it. And this light was still keeping up with them while darting around the trees and bush. Then it just starts getting further back and then disappears. I've never seen it personally, but he does seem a little shaken up by it. Ha ha. Account 9. Was out on a day trip with my parents. We had parked our car when a bird started to make a noise like an alarm. My father had a theory that since this was just by a hospital, the bird had learned to mimic an ambulance siren. Edit. This was in Scandinavia, so probably a passerine bird or a trush. Account 10. Okay. This is awful. So, trigger warnings. I still can't believe it all happened. From about age 8 to 11, my family lived in the woods up in Northern California. We were hippies, sort of. Combo hippie, rednecks. Also, I'm oldish. So when I was a kid, there was no cell phones or internet. There was no cable and we had no TV or electricity for that matter. 
kids would just hang out for fun. And since this was the 70s, we were mostly unsupervised. One of the kids in the group I hung out with was a kid I knew as Dennis. He was a year older than me, and I liked him. I had my first tiny crush on him, actually. Goofy, quiet, but fun, interesting. He taught me to ride a dirt bike, and we used to go cruising around together, me on the back. One day we were riding around, and Dennis said he had to swing by his place to get something. I'd never been to his house, but my brother had, and he came back with stories about Dennis, dad being really creepy in a sexual way. He liked when Dennis brought his male friends over, but hated when girls came along. He'd give the boys pot and beer and show them porn. My brother was freaked out and didn't go there again. On this day, Dennis made me wait outside. He said Ken would be really angry if I came in. At the time, they lived in a trailer, sort of in the middle of nowhere up a dirt road with a tall wire fence and a dog in the yard outside that barked at me non-stop as I waited for Dennis. Ken stood at the window and stared at me with an angry, pouty look on his face. It was weird as hell. Dennis eventually came back out and we left. I tried talking to Dennis about his dad, but he shut down and would not discuss it at all. When I turned 12, we moved and I lost touch with Dennis. Then when I was 14 or 15, my mom sat my brother and I down and said she had something to tell us. She said that the kid we knew as Dennis was actually named Stephen, that the man we thought was his father, Ken, had kidnapped Dennis when he was only seven years old. He'd told Dennis that his parents didn't want him anymore and had given him to Ken to raise. Dennis was heartbroken, but believed it after a while, because what else could he do? He was only seven. Ken molested Dennis for seven years. I can't even think about it. It makes me so fucking angry. My friend lived in that hell, the prisoner of a sadistic child, dash, dash, dash. When Dennis was about 14 or so, he was getting too old to be sexually interesting to that psychopath Ken anymore. So Ken went out and kidnapped another little boy and brought him home. He dyed the kid's hair and told Stephen this was his new brother. The kid's name was Timmy White. Ken left Timmy with Stephen and went to work one evening. Stephen realized that this is what Ken had done to him, that his parents hadn't given him away, that Ken had kidnapped him just as he did Timmy. He wanted to spare Timmy from the suffering he knew was coming, so he took Timmy and managed to hitchhike. Walk about 35 miles to the nearest sheriff station in Ukiah. He walked Timmy in and then Stephen left, figuring he had nowhere else to go. But a cop saw him, brought him in and talked to him. He said, I know my first name is Stephen and Ken was arrested. Stephen saved Timmy and was a hero and an amazing person. Ken spent less time in prison than he'd held Stephen for. Because the prosecutor didn't bring rape charges to spare Stephen from having to testify about it. That always pissed me off. Ken spent so little time in prison and he was a dangerous fucking monster. He did eventually try to buy a little boy from his meals, on wheels caretaker. She went to the police, wore a wire, and Ken was finally thrown in prison for life where he belonged. He's now dead, and I was fucking thrilled the day he died. The very, very, very weird postscript to this is that years later, when I was in my 30s, Stephen's older brother, Carrie, was arrested for the serial killings of four people. Two women, two teenage girls. You may know about that case if you're into true crime. I still can't get my head around the fact that these things happened in one family, and that none of us had a clue what was happening to Stephen back when we all hung out. A uh, diet? Fuck! I just looked up some news stories to check that I got details right about time, ages, and stuff, and I found out that when Ken kidnapped Timmy White, he paid a local kid with money and pot to help him, and the kid did it. He helped Ken kidnap Timmy, and that kid lived in a trailer on our fucking property for a while, and I knew him. His name was Sean Portman. He did some messed up stuff to me when I was maybe 10, which I won't get into. He lived there because my mom was always taking in stray troubled people and offered him the trailer for a while. Fucking hell. Account 11. One night I grabbed my son's toy night vision goggles to see if they even worked. 
If they did, maybe we could see what was making all the weird howling noises in the woods for the last two nights. So I looked across the yard into the woods, and there were so many eyes. So many eyes. They were everywhere. In one case, there was a grouping of three eyes. I had myself convinced it was just a possum with its baby, and I couldn't see the other eye. But then they all blinked at the same time. I have never ever used night vision to look in the woods again. Whatever deformity was there can have its space. Count 12. Once while camping, I went for a very early morning hike to watch the sunrise from on top of a small mountain. My headlamp's batteries were nearly dead, so it was only casting a faint beam of light. For several miles, there were so many eyes glowing back at me from in the woods. It was on a small, decently inhabited island, so it was pretty well established that there were no predators on this island, just lots of deer, but it was still really fucking creepy. Account 13. Something else that happened in rural CO, this is my friend's story. Dress rehearsal for our school play would run a little late sometimes. My friend ended up being one of the last people there. She walked to her car and got in. Something in her rear view mirror caught her eye. She looked through her back window to see that a mountain lion was a few yards away. It wasn't the first instance of a mountain lion being on the school grounds. The middle school was just down the hill from there, and I remember when it locked down because there was a mountain lion outside. Good old nature, lol. Account 14. So a long time ago, I was at a friend's ranch style house on a little bit of land, and it was time for me to head home. Walked outside, and it's close to midnight, but the moon is almost full, so it's really bright. I'm parked back in the sticks a little bit, so... Took me a second to get there, and as I near my truck, I hear like a low growl. Snort, and this beating of feet against the ground. Super loud, but not as loud as a horse, nor as steady. Just kept getting louder and louder. I get a little freaked out, so I run to my truck and fumble my keys, getting them out of my pocket, and they fall to the ground just like some horror movie. I bend over to grab them, and that's when I see something about as tall as my waist round the end of my pickup bed. I immediately knew it was a fucking werewolf, and that was it for me. So this beast just slams into me, knocks me to the ground, and jacked up my elbow. And that's how I met Cookie the Great Dane. Apparently, she belonged to an elderly couple about 40 acres over and would get bored and get out of the fence. I ran in to grab my friends, and we played with her another hour before I headed home. Cookie become a staple around the ranch house, and she always would wait for us when we pulled up. Side note, is it weird, or has anyone else had interactions with unknown creatures and just thought, oh my god, that's a monster, I'm fucked, for like just a split second? Seems like I have a bunch of those. Account 15. I showed up at a friend's house once, as I did almost every day after school. Like 13 years old, I rode my bike everywhere. I usually left it by the side of her pool in her backyard, but as I'm pulling up, she starts waving at me from her front porch. Her parents had gotten upset with us for leaving our bikes up there before, but neither of their cars is in the driveway, so I cruise up and we head inside. She immediately locks the door and calls 911. She had been up in her room looking for me to arrive, as she usually did apparently, and spotted a man lurking behind their pool, very near where I usually dropped my bike, I was almost kidnapped, or like, anything, I don't know. The guy booked it when the cops arrived and they didn't find him. 